Hi folks, we are here with our lesson 8 highlights, the variations from Mendelian heredity. I'm going to talk about two main things or main ideas here from this lesson that I want you to take away and I'll kind of look at one application component for that. So the first thing I want to look at is what's called, oh and I forgot to mention we're joined by our spider friend Pyunki. That's how you pronounce it. Don't ask questions. Okay, back to the originally scheduled lesson. So we're looking here at what's called incomplete dominance. A blend of colors, a blend of traits of the parental generation leads to what's called incomplete dominance. We no longer have what's, a do what's known as a dominant or recessive allele. Neither allele is dominant, neither allele is recessive. They mix, they combine, and they form a new color or a new phenotype. And the example here we use is red snapdragon flowers, white snapdragon flowers combined to make a pink snapdragon flower. Human beings exhibit something very similar with skin color. If you have a parent who is lighter skinned and a parent who is darker skinned, you will be somewhere in the middle of that color gradient and it can vary. It's not quite cut and dry like this, but you'll find out in the next lesson how it kind of works and that will allow you to kind of bridge the ideas from lesson eight to lesson nine. So. Another aspect of this lesson that I want you to take uh, away from this video is that with incomplete dominance where we formed a new phenotype, we also have an aspect of dominance where both phenotypes are displayed. In the case of a red fish and a blue fish forming an offspring, we have a fish with red and blue aspects. Both phenotypes are clearly shown. This is what's called co-dominance, co-dominance. We have both alleles being dominant and both, phen or both alleles lead to a phenotype being shown that displays both aspects of the parental. So how does this work with regards to co-dominance in humans? Well, let's look at our example of blood and blood type specifically that we can combine and connect to our ideas. So we have three main types of blood types. A, B, and O, and they can kind of combine and form into a bunch of different phenotypes. And in this case, our A and B blood type are what's called codominant. So when an A and B allele combine, they form a new blood type that is blood type AB. That's giving us four major blood types. So even though I said, as, as I said earlier, we have three possible alleles, A, B, and I, or I, lowercase i, uh, uppercase I to the exponent of capital A, uppercase I to the capital exponent of capital B. Each allele codes for a different enzyme that places a sugar antigen, which helps identify cell surfaces, and remember that from bacteria and viruses, or a marker specifically, on the surface of that blood type, or that blood cell. And that allows for us to have four major blood types. A has that type A antigen on it, B that type B, AB has both A and B antigens, and type O has absolutely no antigens on it. So that's what allows for them to be the universal donor. That type of blood can be given to all sorts of people, and the bodies of those people won't reject it because it doesn't have that antigen on it. So when looking at the possible genotypes of each of these four groups of blood types, we look at type A first, where it could be homozygous dominant, or it could be what's called heterozygous, I, that capital I A with a lowercase i. Same thing goes for blood type B where it can be homozygous dominant or heterozygous. Blood type AB though, there's no real way to describe it because it's not quite heterozygous. So we can just say type AB or you know the, the genotype being IA, IB. And then lastly we have type O which is a recessive trait and so we would have two lowercase i's. Oh, I guess I didn't draw you a picture, Dan. So anyways, that sums up this lesson's uh, highlights. If you have questions, you know where to find me.